if you're looking for your first sim racing wheel, this video is for you. Last year, I asked you this question. How much have you spent on your first wheel? And most of you said under 400 pounds, euros or dollars. For this year, 2024, let's pick up on that value, but add around 10 to 15% because we had a lot of inflation last year. And because there are a few deals right now on new wheels that are really worth the price difference. There are many wheels on that price range that I would recommend you to start with. Like I recommend you to subscribe and become a member to the channel. If you are in a budget, the first place you should look always is towards the secondhand market. Places like eBay, Facebook, or even Amazon secondhand. Sometimes you can get access to bundles that have been discontinued and they will come with uh, pedals or shifter or something like that. That will be under the price that they were normally sold. And that would also mean sometimes people just want to get rid of their old equipment and you can get equipment in good condition for peanuts money. But like always in second hands, you need to ask questions to the vendor if the equipment is in good state or if there's something they need to look at first. But let's start talking about new equipment. The bottom of the barrel of sim racing will be extremely cheap, but in my opinion, it's really not worth your time. We're talking about the bungee wheels like the PXN V9 or the Trustmaster T80. The performance of it, it will be awful. The feeling of it, it will be awful. And honestly, they don't last a lot of time. So spend once, cry once. And if you don't spend too much, you're gonna cry much more than that. Also, because we're talking about the first wheel, unless some of you were looking for upgrades on the budget, we have to talk about bundles because it will have pedals and the wheel at the very least. All the recommendations thus far are very straightforward and really not that much different from whatever else has been in the past, but now there will be a couple of directions for this video. For those of you who need PlayStation support and for those of you who just need PC support. And the reason is quite simple. It's called uh, bundles with direct drives because the direct drives prices have plummeted in 2023 just a few months after I released last year's video. So nowadays that means you can get a direct drive bundle for less than $500 and oftentimes even less than that. In terms of wheels for Xbox, there will be more choice, but for PlayStation, the choice will be more limited. I do have a video exclusively directed to PlayStation. It will be on the link in the description. The first couple of choices will be the Trustmaster T150 and T128. The T150 is a reliable wheel with quite interesting for feedback for the price. It is a little bit grainy, but it does the job rather well. The issue with both of them is that they have very light and imprecise pedals, but for first pedals, they should be okay. And you can find these at around 150 to 180 pounds or under $200 sometimes. The thing about the T150 now is that it has been somewhat discontinued. I don't think uh, Trustmaster is producing it anymore, but sometimes you can still find new boxes of it because it, if it has been discontinued, it was just last year and not all the boxes have been sold. Otherwise, you'll have to find these on secondhand market. Outside of Trustmaster for the starting low end, we have the Logitech G29, a wheelbase family that has been the starting point for many in sim racing. As a wheelbase, it is rugged, it gives decent force feedback for the price, the gears are slightly loud, the pedals that come in the box are phenomenally well designed for many use cases, they can be mounted, used in the floor and the carpets, the brake is usable and the pedal rates are very well selected. As a package, it is still very hard to beat the Logitech G29 for price and for features as you can get these often at a price lower than 200 pounds or around $220. Slightly above in terms of price, there's a Logitech G923. It's mainly the same wheel, but comes with a set of improvements. Most importantly, a quieter gear system and the addition of True Force, which brings tactile feedback into some titles like Gran Turismo Sport, 7, Assetto Corsa Competizione and Grid 2019. It can feel a bit of a gimmick if it's not correctly set up. The format is pretty much the same as the G29, including the Xbox version. You can find the G923 for under 300 pounds and you can connect both the G923 and the G920 and the G29 to an optional shifter that will cost you around 40 pounds. So that means if you go towards the Logitech G29, you're gonna get a complete package for around $250, 250 pounds, which is the sweet spot for a lot of people. The competition from Trustmaster for the Logitech G wheels is the Trustmaster T248. 
It's an upgrade to the T150 and it has improved for seatback, lots of buttons and a very decent pedal set for the price. It will be better than every single item on this list for the PlayStation compatible uh, wheels and it's an interesting design even if it's a bit ugly. For this type of wheel, it actually has a really strong drive and the price isn't really too bad. You can get it at around 250 to 270 uh, pounds or around $300. Then we have the PXN V10, which I don't really recommend for North America or Europe because of the price that generally this sells. The wheel's force feedback is really muddy. It is on a strong side and it connects to almost everything. So it's really a main selling point for it. Another main selling point, it is the inclusion of pedals and shifters in the package. The pedals are actually nice to use on the floor because of the light spring rates, but that also raises the issue because the soft spring rates makes the pedals kind of erratic. The added shifter is actually really nice and competent for the package that is on offer. In Europe, this costs around 279 euros to around 350 euros. And for that price, in my opinion, you should get something else. Outside of Europe, you can find these as low as $180, and in that case, well, you might have a look at it, but the force feedback, once again, it's really not that good. Then we have what is likely the best choice under 400 pounds if you really need the PlayStation support, and in this case, it will be the T300 family. The T300 RS has been in the market for years. It still provides excellent value and decent performance for the price. It's the strongest wheel around this price point if you need the console support with excellent detailed force feedback, a decently strong wheel, an excellent steering wheel and the wheelbase is compatible with the rest of the Thrustmaster ecosystem. There are two flavors of the T300, one is called the RS that comes with the same low end pedals as the T150 and then the RS GT that comes with the T3PA, much better pedals, the same as the T150 Pro. You can look at the T300 as a stepping stone or more of a long term a platform where you can look at the T300s just for the wheelbase and drive the wheelbase and then upgrade the pedals or you can look at the 300 rs gt pro that will be under 400 pounds and you can use the pedals for a long time and you still have a very competent wheelbase if you need the xbox support inside of playstation you need to look for the tx version of this wheel for 2024, there is the entrance to the market of the low ends or the small form factor direct drives that will trump pretty much every choice on this list, unless of course you need the PlayStation support or you are really stuck in a budget. Still the prices for these wheels, even though they are higher, they are more or less the same what the T300 RS GT or even the TSPC or the TGT has sold historically in the past. So in that way, they are still very competitive with them. There are a few choices on offer, but because they are direct drives, they will work more or less the same and they will have a set of advantages over the other wheels that we've talked about. The first one is that since there are direct drives, the motor is connected directly to the wheel, so there will be less lag, there will be no clunking noises inside, you won't feel the gears, it will be a much smoother and faster experience. The other big advantage of direct drives, except for one that we're gonna talk about next, is that all of the wheels can be interchanged between them. So that means you're gonna have a quick release. If you want something for a formula, you just remove a wheel and put in another one. So you'll have an expensive ecosystem, but generally they also come with very decent wheels that you can start racing with. The first one, it's Mazza with the Mazza R3. That will be at around 350 to $400. This is the cheapest and lowest powered direct drive currently on sale. And there's also a bundle option for it that will come with some pedals and a desk clamp. It's a pretty decent wheelbase that will have power similar to something like a Thrustmaster T300 RS and it has Xbox support in this case. The force feedback will feel a little bit snappier and a little more connected to the roads. The pedals that will come will be a basic two pedal set that then you can upgrade to a load cell if you want so later down the run. Their R3 has three new meters, but if you need something a little more powerful and if you want to excuse the Xbox support, they have something like the R5. The thing about Mozza right now is the ecosystem, the prices tend to be okay and have a great quick release and a bunch of wheels that you can choose from. Camus is a newcomer into the sim racing market and they have a new wheelbase called the Camus C5 that has the motor inside of the wheel, which is something completely unique. While it has plenty of drawbacks in terms of ergonomics, the four seat back is strong and super compact. 
it stands at $250 for the wheel alone or $300 with pedals. But I would recommend you to get the desk clamp even if you have a wheel stand or a rig. While it has plenty of drawbacks in terms of design and ergonomics, the four seat back is strong and super compact. It stands at $250 for the wheel alone or 300 with pedals, but I would recommend you to get the desk clamp even if you have a wheel stand or a rig. Probably the biggest disadvantage of this wheel is that you cannot change the wheels like you can do with most direct drives or even the T300 RS GT but the wheel itself will have plenty of options and if you really don't care much about it, this could be a great choice. The last wheel we're gonna talk about today will be the CSLDD, mainly the ready to race bundle. The CSLDD has been released for a while and has excellent force feedback for the price. The bundles are many, but under $500, there's one with the CSL pedals, uh, the wheelbase and a P1 wheel. One that is upgraded with eight Nm meters instead of the base five and also one that has the McLaren wheel that is really, really good. There's a few others out there, even below and above this price, so there's plenty of choices. The pedals are decent and they will have an upgrade to a load cell and the wheelbase itself will be part of the extensive Fanatec ecosystem of, of pedals and wheels so you can mix and match your equipment as you want to. All of these wheels I've talked about will be compatible with your desk or you have an option to buy a separate desk clamp. So that means you just connect it to your uh, computer or to your console if it's compatible with that console and you just go. Let us know in the comments what was your first wheel and how much you have spent on it and if you have upgraded from it. And also check out uh, the video for my favorite equipment of 2023.